Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. When Orville and Wilbur Wright and other flight pioneers first took to the skies, most people realized that air crashes were the next inevitable part of the growth process. Aircraft crashes had to be tested and made safer. Realistic and extreme techniques were found by the United States to test crash helicopters and aircraft in facilities such as the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. In 1944, the U.S. Army Air Service conducted the first controlled aircraft crash tests using a B-25 Mitchell bomber at Wright Field, Ohio, aiming to improve crew survivability and safety features by intentionally crashing it into a barrier. NASA began crash testing planes in the 1970s to improve aviation safety. All right, and good. It's good. All right. The last one's going to be the Key projects included the 1984 controlled impact demonstration, in which a Boeing 720 was deliberately crashed to investigate fuel fire safety. These tests provided vital data on crash dynamics, which led to improvements in aircraft design, materials, and safety practices, resulting in dramatically higher passenger survival rates in aviation accidents. Five. Helicopters must also be tested. In 2019, the Transport Rotorcraft Airframe Crash Testbed Full-Scale Crash Test took place at NASA Langley's Landing and Impact Research Facility. The test involved a modified Sikorsky S-64 helicopter fuselage equipped with crash test dummies and various sensors. It was dropped from a height to simulate a severe but survivable crash scenario. NASA experts and others from the military as well as national and international government agencies spent nearly three years planning for less than 10 seconds. That's how long it took for this 45 foot long old helicopter to drop 30 feet into a bed of soil. A landmark experiment in the pursuit of safer flight was the Fokker F-28 crash test conducted at NASA Langley's Landing and Impact Research Facility. The 2012 test, which replicated a devastating crash landing, used a retired Fokker F-28 Fellowship plane, which was dropped from a height of 14 feet. The plane had a plethora of sensors to detect hits and forces, as well as 24 crash test dummies to stand in for passengers and crew. Information regarding the fuselage's structural integrity, the effectiveness of the seats and seat belts, and the possibility of damage to passengers was greatly enhanced by this test. Improvements in commercial aviation's crashworthiness and occupant safety systems were aided by the findings. At the landing and impact research facility, engineers performed another major crash test in 2017. They simulated a 30-foot-per-second crash by dropping a 14-foot-long piece of airplane fuselage from a height. Ten crash test dummies designed to mimic human occupants were installed in the fuselage. To explore the effects on the fuselage and its occupants, 
This controlled experiment attempted to imitate the circumstances of a hard crash landing. The setup captured detailed data on the forces experienced during the accident using sophisticated instrumentation, which offered vital insights into the dynamics of the incident. On September 23, 2023, researchers at the Landing and Impact Research Facility conducted a detailed crash test with a Cessna 172. It was dropped from a height of 82 feet onto concrete. The goal was to assess the effectiveness of four emergency locating transmitters that were put on board. This test was critical because studies have shown that ELTs may not always work properly in accident conditions. Thereby impeding rescue efforts. Researchers hope to acquire data on how successfully ELTs triggered and broadcast distress signals under extreme settings, providing insights for improving ELT installation and reliability in future aircraft designs. A different system is used to test aerodynamics. NASA Ames Research Center in California's Silicon Valley is well known for its unitary planned wind tunnel complex, which has three unique test sections for a wide range of Mach number testing. Ames also houses the National Full-Scale Aerodynamics Complex, which is excellent for testing full and large-scale aircraft. NASA Langley Research Center, located in Hampton, Virginia, has a long history of wind tunnel research and has just begun construction on a new facility. Langley also maintains several functioning tunnels for various testing purposes. Companies like Boeing use these modern facilities to test new aircraft types, such as the 757 and 737, to ensure performance and safety before commercial deployment. Boeing's 737 MAX was rigorously tested in NASA's wind tunnels to assure peak performance and safety. For example, at NASA Ames Research Center, the aircraft's aerodynamics were thoroughly evaluated in the Unitary Plan Wind Tunnel Complex, which allows for a wide range of Mach number testing. Similarly, NASA Langley Research Center's operating tunnels provided valuable information about flying conditions. Experts in Boeing's transonic wind tunnel testing lab examined a small-scale replica of the 737 MAX, particularly the new advanced technology winglet. These high-accuracy experiments were designed to confirm the winglet's usefulness in increasing fuel efficiency and overall aircraft performance. The findings of these experiments, together with data from NASA's advanced wind tunnels, helped greatly fine-tune the design before commercial deployment. 
Aircraft companies use such modern facilities to evaluate new aircraft models, ensuring they meet demanding performance and safety requirements. Along with the upper winglet, we've added a lower winglet. The lower winglet, in addition, moves the effective span of the wing outboard, reducing drag and improving the fuel burn for the customer. For wind tunnels, model aircraft are needed, which need to be exactly like the full-scale aircraft scaled down. Boeing's wind tunnel model shop in Seattle is a state-of-the-art facility where skilled craftsmen and engineers design and build intricate, small-scale versions of future airplanes. These models, typically ranging from 1 10th to 1 50th scale, are precision crafted to replicate the exact aerodynamic characteristics of their full-scale counterparts. The model shop team uses advanced computer-aided design software and 3D printing technology to create complex shapes and geometries, ensuring accurate representations of the aircraft's curves and contours. This process allows Boeing engineers to validate design concepts, identify potential issues, and make necessary adjustments before investing in full-scale production, ultimately saving time and resources. So by the time it rolls out the door here, we've cut out a lot of time, we've cut out a lot of energy, saved a whole big ton of money for labor, materials, testing. We're better and faster than we ever were. That completes our pre-test preparation. Fully built aircraft must also be tested on the ground. Boeing's aircraft frame testing is a demanding process, which ensures the structural longevity and safety of new airplane types, such as the 787 Dreamliner. Pre-test preparations involve installing the aircraft on a specially built test rig and connecting approximately 100 mechanical devices to various areas of the plane. ranging from the wing's leading edge to the tail fin. These systems recreate the stresses of over 100,000 flights by simulating the ground-air-ground -ground cycle, which includes taxiing, takeoff, cruise, landing, and return to the terminal. This rigorous testing carried out seven days a week for three years is critical for certifying the aircraft and validating maintenance methods. It ensures that any cyclical damage is recognized well before it impacts the fleet. We're demonstrating the durability of the airplane, checking our structural maintenance procedures. So we do them first on this airplane before an airline has to validate that we do have inspection techniques where we can find any cyclical damage well before the fleet will experience it. A critical test is also performed called a rejected takeoff test. The rejected takeoff test for aircraft like the Boeing 747-8 is a vital evaluation that ensures the aircraft can safely abort takeoff at close to maximum weight. Captain Kurt Vining and the Boeing test crew begin the test with the airplane fueled to over 975,000 pounds with brakes that are completely worn out. Vining abruptly applies maximum brakes at almost 200 miles per hour without employing thrust reversers, channeling enormous energy into the carbon brakes. The 747-8 makes a successful stop more than 700 feet earlier than intended. The brakes, which reach temperatures of more than 1,400 degrees Celsius, flash bright orange as smoke billows. Simulating real-world delays, firemen wait five minutes before assisting to ensure the aircraft can take the heat.
The test is successfully completed. In cases where accidents do occur, the next step is getting passengers and crew off the aircraft alive. In the event of an airliner fire, crash trucks, also known as aircraft rescue and firefighting vehicles, play an important part in the emergency response. ARFF trucks are initially employed to create an escape route for stranded passengers, allowing them to evacuate the aircraft safely. Once the passengers have been evacuated, the ARFF trucks will focus on extinguishing the fire with their powerful water cannons and foam dispensers. The vehicles are outfitted with cutting-edge firefighting agents and equipment, allowing them to combat difficult fires swiftly and effectively. As the fire is brought under control, the ARFF trucks continue to aid, ensuring that the aircraft is completely extinguished and the situation is secure. Modern aircraft are known to have better safety records than automobiles. With thousands of aircraft in the skies, the industry is saturated and can't afford accidents or deaths during accidents. For that reason, the more rigorous the testing, the safer the aircraft should be. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.